Welcome to this short presentation of Process Gold. My name is Rudolf Kuhn and I will show you around today. Well, Process Gold, Process Mining, now part of UiPath, is a browser-based application. We run in the cloud or on-premise. The screen, this application you see on the, on the screen, is what we call our application one. So it's a template we have developed based on our experience from several hundreds of process mining projects we have delivered successfully since 2010. On this first dashboard, you get the first idea of your data. We see the number of cases, we see the number of events, we see the number of activities. We actually have activities like pay invoice, receive invoice, or approve invoice. So you easily see this process is about invoice approval. And probably the only process mining related number is the 290 different variations we see in this example. Well, to see the process, you go to this next menu item called process and click on it. The system will now visualize based on the data, the most common variation of your process. We start with receive invoice and we end with pay invoice. The numbers in between are the number of invoices flowing through your process. If we increase the number of activities, the system will visualize the less common variations or less common activities, like in this example, request data or check contract conditions. We can do the same for edges. So adding edges will give us an idea what other variations or paths we have in our system. The data we see right now, the number is the number of invoices. We can easily switch to any other metric like case percentage, or like throughput time, or if we have any other numerical data, then for example, to the average invoice amount. And because the shading or the saturation of the color is related to the selected metric, you already get an idea why we have the side steps in this process, because here we dealt with higher invoices than in the other variations. Well, if we see that we have a very strange variation, so a very strange connection like this one, where cases are obviously bypassing the approval step, to identify what the problem is, we simply click on the path. And by clicking on it, we apply a filter for all cases where the fine check of invoice is directly followed by pay invoice. If we approve our selection, we will realize, oh, we still see the approved invoice in here. How is this possible? Well, some cases most likely come down, they go up, they go down again. And we have a nice feature to visualize this, the animation. So if I turn on the animation, then we see this little dots over here and every dot represents one invoice. If I start the animation, we see how cases are flowing through the process. You know, I can stop it at any time. I can zoom in, point at the case, and I will get the number or the case type, the case ID of this, of this invoice. And if I click on it, it will take me to a another page another dashboard for the details where we see the master data of the case you know the suppliers amount case type everything oh, we see a throughput time 173 days and we see now exactly when who did what in detail and if we have the right data we can maybe even see that this activity cost us 39 dollars and because this case was you know in the process for 173 days it was automatically marked with a tag called sla violation but I will come back to this in a moment. Let's go back to the process. So to identify all cases without any approval step, we simply right click on the activity and select cases that do not pass through this activity. It will apply a filter. And now we get the 2,126 cases. Let's switch off the animation where even if we add you know, all activities and we add all edges, we have no approval step at all. Well, and we see the variation, probably information we don't really care about right now. So to understand, for example, what the root cause is, let's switch to the supplier. And instead of looking on number of cases, let's see what the case amount has been, the total case amount. And instead of looking all data, let's customize this filter and compare maybe the first quarter of 2019 with the previous quarter. And we see changes in the amounts. To better understand, for example, who was responsible for the case with this plus, we can easily add other attributes like the case owner. 
Well, and if you don't like the sorting, you take the case owner, put the case owner behind, or the supply behind the case owner, and we get a different table. And if we care only for the cases of Rebecca, we click on Rebecca, we zoom in, and now we see 151 cases only from Rebecca. Again, when we go to detail or when we click on this little icon, it will show us the complete list of all cases. We can sort it either on amount or we can sort it on, on throughput time. Again, here we have some cases that have been in the process too long. We click on it and again, we see exactly the details. And we see when bots were involved in the process, by the way. Well, and because this case was in the process for more than 30 days, it has the stack SLA violation. So just to show you quickly the conformance check, this is you know where we define business rules and the data will be checked automatically against the business rules. And every time we have any sort of exception, let me remove all of my filters and go on all data. So we see you know what kind of um, SLA violations, for example, how many SLA violations and what other um, exceptions we had in the process. Well, let me show you one last thing about automation. So how can we monitor automation with process code and process mining by UiPath? Well, for that, we have a specific dashboard called automation. We go there and we see, you know, let's go again, customize the data. Let's go back to a period where we had very little automation implemented in this example. So here we see the most common variation of the process and we see that the receive invoice step is already automated by 100%. All the other steps are not automated and pay invoice was automated. Well, when we add more activities and we even maybe add more edges, we see you know, the big bottleneck in this process was this one with the nine days. So this is where we lost the time. Well, next quarter, we started to implement automation for this customer. So let's see what changed. Well, this looks much better. So now the throughput time dropped already by two days from nine days to seven days in average. And we have an automation rate of 21% for the next step. People continue to use UiPath. And now we see that, you know, in the third quarter of 2019, our throughput time actually already dropped from 1.7 days uh, from nine to seven and now to 1.7 hours. And the process invoice step is now automated by 99%. Unfortunately, what also happened is that the throughput time for the next activity request data increased. It's four days now. You probably didn't notice, but the month before or the quarter before it was only 2.2 days. And the quarter before that, even it was 1.9 days. So you know, automating one step in the process does not solve the whole, the entire issue. So what happened? We increased the throughput time for process invoice by automating it, but we caused another problem with request data. Well, this is just a very, very simple example. Um, how to use process code, process mining, now part of UiPath. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me and have a great day. Thank you. Bye.